What is the best way to backup photos? This is my pro backup strategy. Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Rick McAvoy. This week I am talking about backing up your photos. Boring but important. Very important. So this is what I've written about on my blog. I'm going to talk about it now. You can listen to the full version here or the one minute short which will be coming up once recorded. Like I say, this is important, this is boring, but important, very important. This is something that we photographers must do if we are taking our photography seriously. We have to look after our most critical thing, which is of course our photos. Here's the answer a bit. The best way to back up photos is to have them stored in three physically separate locations. A professional backup strategy allows you to survive a catastrophic loss of data on your computer with minimal disruption and no loss of data. It is integrated into your workflows, automated as much as possible and constantly updated. Right then, that was the answer. point I want to get across here is that my data is stored in three separate locations, okay? First thing, all my photos are in a single... Oh, sorry. Who am I? Well, I'm Rick McAvoy, photographer, member of the British Institute of Professional Photography. I keep on forgetting to remind people about. I'm a blogger, I'm a podcaster, I'm the creator of the Photography Explained podcast, and I'm also a photography educator and a user of Lightroom since version 1.0 in 2007. Yep, I've been with Lightroom from the very beginning and it's my go-to photo editing software and it's also what I use to organise my photos. Okay, if you want to read the full blog post, rickmacavoyphotography.com and you'll find it there. Right then, one other thing I want to say. I nearly suffered, very nearly suffered, an absolutely catastrophic loss of data. Now this was a few years ago and this is what caused me to look into this subject and to, um, to get my data management sorted and my backup strategy. It was a real horrible, gut-wrenching moment when I, my computer lurched to start and um, I couldn't open Lightroom. And that meant I didn't have access to any photos. What did I do? Well, I had a one terabyte hard drive on my PC and it just got fuller and fuller and fuller and slower and slower and slower to the point where it ground to a halt. So I bought an external hard drive, I put everything on there, it's, I've got a two terabyte one to start with, deleted all the rubbish off my hard drive, my computer was working and then I thought, this is the time. I've got my Lightroom catalogue, well I've got Lightroom the program on my hard drive and I got my photos on an external hard drive and I wasn't comfortable with that. So that's when I looked into how I back things up. So single Lightroom catalogue, first point, all my photos on a single Lightroom catalogue. Now I've got about 80,000 photos in my Lightroom catalogue and there's no upper limit according to Adobe to how many photos you can have in a Lightroom catalogue, so don't worry about it. Now 80,000 photos might sound a lot, or it might not sound a lot. You see, I, I don't take a lot of photos. I've, um, I'm at that point in my photographic career where I try and get, if I could take one photo and I walk away, I'm happy, then I'm happy. Reality is somewhat different, but I don't take a lot of photos. I take very few photos. I'm very careful what I take photos of. And that, that's helped the situation. So, one Lightroom catalogue. All my photos are stored in this single Lightroom catalogue, which is on an external four terabyte hard drive. Lightroom is installed on my computer hard drive. That means that the, it's running quickly because it's on the computer hard drive, which is faster than an external hard drive. And I honestly don't suffer from slowness of speed with a USB 2 port. I haven't got the latest computer. It's nothing fancy. It's just a a very good Dell functioning computer. Okay, so what else have I got? Backup running in the cloud. I pay for this, and I'm not being paid to say this, but I pay my five, six pounds or dollars a month to have a cloud backup constantly updating. I use Backblaze. Other services are available. I'm sure there are free services available. So what this gives me, I've got 
photos in three places external hard drive the cloud and the third place I haven't told you about yet which is I put them on an external hard drive which I store off-site in a different well it's a different county actually it's not a different building or ha it's a different county so I think I'm quite secure there so if I suffer one catastrophic loss of data I've always got two other separate backups that's what I do that is my pro backup and it has served me well since I had the problem with my hard drive I've never had a problem check out the full blog post there's lots on there lots and lots of stuff I just wanted to dive to the end if that's okay with you um, things you can do to help the situation well I wrote last week how do I free up space in Lightroom this is I got 196 gigabytes back and that was the cause of this post to be honest with you because it started got me th it, <laughs> it got me thinking about um, things that are relevant and it just came out that I'm talking about the 196 gigabytes check out last week's post or last week's video and you can find out what I'm talking about and that got me onto the subject of backup in Lightroom housekeeping things you can do get rid of rubbish photos now when I import photos into Lightroom I do a first pass anything that's out of focus rubbish uninteresting dull delete it I delete them straight away I get rid of them and I empty my recycle bin another important discipline and I've never once thought I wish I hadn't deleted that photo I need to go back to it but guess what I could always do that from the backups the import backups that I've got have you got two photos that are identical you know one taken from this view then one from that view very similar not quite identical delete one you don't need them both I stopped myself from doing this for ages and I'm sure I've got hundreds if not thousands of duplicate photos that I just do not need that I've never got round to deleting get rid of them when you import them you won't regret it trust me I don't know why I say trust me it's as though if you're listening seven minutes into this video I'm hoping there's an amount of trust there so getting rid of photos is a very very good thing you're eliminating part of the problem that's sourced by deleting rubbish get rid of it you don't need it once it's gone it's gone okay so check out the full blog post at rickmacavoyphotography.com and while you're on why not check out my splendid podcast the photography explained podcast other than that hopefully i'll see you on another video and i will say cheers from me rick <laughs>